It like thinks. I think we're good. There we are. Chris, <laughs> we're here. We're live. Woo! Yay! All right. So, Chris, thanks for joining us. Chris Baden, uh, rock star prospector. Got to know Chris over the past, I don't know, few few months. And Chris, is that a um, is that a million dollars worth of prospecting hanging on your wall behind you? You mean whoosh, this thing? That? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we uh, we did accomplish the two comma club award. Uh, really grateful for that. And I keep saying we because there's no way in heck I would have done that alone. Uh, would have not would not have survived that without Sean and Melissa Malone for sure. So Sean and Melissa, great folks. So this is really really cool. Let me pull up. Um, I'm gonna pull up Facebook on my phone here, guys, so I can answer questions as we go along. As always, ask your questions as we go along. We do these interviews to get everybody in our community as much information as possible for absolutely freaking free. So thank you, Chris, for doing this for us and answering questions. If anybody, if you see anybody on a broadcast ever and they have one of those things hanging behind them, that ClickFunnels thing, regardless of what you think about ClickFunnels, I know there's people who love it and people who hate it, who cares? Bottom line is those plaques represent an enormous amount of work and a really insane amount of proficiency and expertise at prospecting. You know how to get leads if you have one of those things hanging on your wall. So well done, Chris. Like, super thank you. Well thank you. Thanks for hanging out. So <laughs> we got to do, do more of these lives. This feels good so far. It is fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. I like it. <laughs> and Chris has a cool studio. And Chris has, yeah, a shower curtain hanging over his whiteboard. I'm assuming so you can hide it so we can't see what your notes are. Oh, you mean my <laughs> secret plans? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take over the world. What's up, Rock, Carol? Awesome to see you. Clover, great to see you. Okay, so Chris, let's do this. First up, I know you got some cool stuff that I was just looking at some of your stuff and we talked through some of these things before, but you're, the way you kind of line out prospecting and how it works and the kind of the journey that, that goes into that. But tell us about your process, your progression, where you are right now, or walk through the journey of prospecting. Give us background so we can start pinging Q&A. And obviously everybody, as always, if you got questions, jump in. And uh, we will we will absolutely rock them as they come up. Rock says that lion picks is sick, Chris. Yeah, uh, thanks, yeah. thanks, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, Rock. Yeah, like he, here's okay for this morning. It's Monday morning right now, and I hope that everyone watching this, that's running their business, a part part of their sales, like whatever it is, wants to make more money, wants to make more connections, wants to make more friends, and wants to go. If you, if that's you, you're in the right place. This is going to be a really, really fun live for you. And, and so this is the one thing, the one thing that will do it. It's the one thing that I hope that you hear today. It's the one thing that I hope you implement today. And I want to hang out just uh, and start here in this place, Chris, of prospecting because this, it's like diet and exercise. Does anyone argue, debate, wonder if diet and exercise works? No, <laughs> right? But then why don't we all do it? Because it's not fun, because it's not interesting, because I tried that and it didn't work or I don't feel good about myself or it triggers shame and guilt and I don't wanna go to that place yet. If we can push in, lean in and just do the thing, then it, it, like, let's put it this way. This is fun, Chris, all right? Yeah, Rock's like, let's go. Yes, Rock, <laughs> I hope I'm energetic. It's just kind of how it goes, right? I know Chris has got a ton of energy too, but like, Chris, have you ever heard someone say this? You know what, Chris? I have worked out more than I ever have in my life. I'm, in fact, I'm in the best shape I've ever been in my life. And Chris, I was on point with my diet. I have more energy than I've ever felt. This, I can jump higher, run faster. I feel better. You should see how my spouse looks at me. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and like all those things, I've done that this entire year. And you know what? Man, I really regret all the work that I did. No, nobody. Like, no one has ever said, like, no one ever says that. You're like, this was totally worth this. Amazing. Why didn't I do more of this? That is prospecting for your business. And it grows this tool called money that allows us to buy back our time and to pursue the passions and things that were already put within it. Actually, it's just this reciprocal thing. So the one thing that we're talking about today, number one is absolutely worth everyone's ear, everyone's attention and I'm going to share and give um, a couple practical tools that will help accelerate this, give you uh, inspiration, encouragement, confidence to take even just one extra, like one extra step. 
have one extra conversation, have one extra breakthrough, 100%. And it rocks like, preach. But <laughs> <Go it's>, by. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not even on the soapbox yet, rock. <laughs> so um, yeah, there's a ton of passion. And and Chris, I think it's, I think it's worth uh, sharing a little bit where is some of this passion, where some of this passion comes from. And um, that there's two, there's twofold to this, Chris, and you're going to have to jump and ask me questions. I'm just going to like fly off no, the dude, handle you're here. Fired off, man. It's Monday morning. <laughs> if we're not prospecting right now. We're going to have a really sucky Wednesday or a sucky Friday or a sucky next month. Prospecting, prospecting makes the worry and the pain and the fear go away. I freaking love prospecting. So fire away. Keep going. Yes. And, and that's where the education comes from. So real quick, like, By the way, guys... what's up, Kelton, Sean, um, rock to see you again, <laughs> Melissa. Great to see y'all Malone zones in the house. What's up? Guys? <laughs> Love those guys. Huge. Like you guys need to reach out to them. They're they're would not be here without them. And, uh, they're, they're the, they're the type of partners that when crap hits the fan, and your back's up against the wall, you know they're just going to come out swinging just like I am. And that's why we've worked over the last four years. So huge shout out to you guys. Love you guys. Um, all right. So b- back to some fun here with, with the prospecting thing. Like there's a, this some of this conviction, some of this passion that you feel there's two parts to this. There's, there's personal experience that's ongoing, but it's also so personal that these are principles that I live by, not only live by, that I actually implement, teach, and give my kids. And I have a really, really cool story to kind of anchor this uh, for you guys. I prepared a couple little pictures, so I get to take you on a little journey. It'll be fun, right? Awesome. So here, here we go. Here we go. Yes. And then, hey, here's StreamYard. Here's StreamYard. Um, it looks like on our so, side. So, and and let's do this, Chris. Like, pull pull us back just so it's us, just yeah. for a second. And then you're on point, though. You get a point for that. <laughs> you're like, boom. I'm ready. Ready. <laughs> yes, that was awesome. <laughs> So like personally, I, I want everyone to hear uh, for the last nine years, this is important. I've either been commission only, owned and operated my own business or been partnered in a business that I have equity in and, and operating. Hmm. And I've built three different uh, companies that do at least a million dollars in sales or, or more uh, in three different industries. Yeah. Private. And, and if you, if you go to my Instagram, I'm not insanely active there. I'll do an occasional story. Uh, but you, the point of that is in the profile, it says, I'm usually thinking about one of three things, what building a lifelong marriage, world impacting family and multimillion dollar businesses. And the thing that I want people to hear is I don't come from money. I come from a world that, um, that is like, number like building multi million dollar businesses like isn't really even a thought and then the other piece of well if you're going to do that then you can't have family mm-hmm. do you want family or do you want success mm-hmm. and i didn't have like a model or understand like i didn't know anyone that did that thing but it was just this like from being uh i don't know at a younger age is this this thing that was in me mm-hmm. and so i began my journey and i started um, I don't just, just reading and, and got into sales somehow. And in sales, there's been multiple times in this, even just in the nine year window, Chris, of like prospecting has been the one superpower. It's been the one thing. I mean, you can call it prospecting or you can call it persistence. I don't like, sometimes it's kind of the same, but it's this relentless, like, I'm just not going to quit. I have reminders like this, you know, says don't quit. And it's like this whole like poem thing. Like Mm. there's been multiple times where like I've, I'm a saver. Like I plan, I've pushed through, even when I don't understand my product perfectly, Mm -hmm. or I'm scared to go out and talk, or I don't know who my perfect customer is or how to talk to them or what to say. I just, uh, here's a really good tip, Chris. If anyone listening is in that place, Guess what? Congratulations. You don't have to prospect. You can go do research. Hmm. Re- research is actually that excuse of where you go talk to the people that you want to talk to that you're afraid of, but yeah. you're not there to sell them. Literally, you, I, you're just there to listen. Mm-hmm. And then they tell you all the things that you want to hear when you're trying to sell them, but you just got all the answers and now you know how to sell them. And I'll, I have my give will actually show you exactly how to do that. There's eight magical questions that pull that out every single time. So if you're interested in that, just type in like, type, say like, yes, type yes in the chat. <laughs> I guess <laughs> I've something. seen some of the stuff that Chris throws out. It's insanely valuable. Like what the heck? So um, I, like I, I come to this place, Chris, where 
And there's been multiple different challenges, uh, uh, even just in this last nine years. But there's one where I was really, really pissed off because um, I, like since the time my grandma would give me a, like a, a small check for Christmas. And I from the time I was young, it was just her thing. And I have never spent a penny mm. every single year, even as a kid, like I put it straight into the uh, into my savings. And there's this pattern, right? Like I graduate at the top of my class. Cause I, I'm not, I read so slow. I'm always the last one to finish a test, but I, I put the time in and then same with sports. Like I make my, make an effort. I'm not perfect, but I make an effort to do all the right things. And I come to this moment where I want to provide for my marriage and I want to provide for my family. And I finally get to start a family in three months before Emmett, my first son was born. My business gets shut down. I've got 30 plus thousand dollars in debt. And I'm just like, it's just like, it's all gone. I'm like, I don't know how to articulate. I'm like, this isn't fair. It's not like I screwed, screwed up or like messed up. It was just, here's life. And I have multiple different cycles of this. And the one thing that has lifted me up and given me the courage, inspiration to make it is prospecting. It's to get mm -hmm. back up and go have the conversations, be creative, go solve problems for people. And it's it's ingrained in me so deep. I know anyone listening to me, there is no person on planet earth that will be able to even get close to selling me on the fact that it doesn't work. Hmm. It's BS. It has saved my life, my business, and allowed me to actually, I work remotely. I have the last four years. I, I've decided, I didn't just make money. I decide how I make money. Mm -hmm. Because I have the skill and anyone listening can pr can press in and be creative and solve problems for people in certain patterns in a way. And Chris, you're just help. You're in my journey. You're meeting me in that journey of how to even level up further. We're mm -hmm. like building teams and systems that you've been showing us. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, look, we're going to do this and then more. But even <laughs> and then even give like there's there's less time and there's more team, which is even more fulfilling because you're connecting with more people and hearing more stuff. Like you're, that's the part of this journey that you're coming into. So if you guys aren't listening to Chris, like freaking listen to Chris, <laughs> um, because he has, I, I have my third on the way. He's already got five, you have five kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Right. I, so I'm, I'm learning from people that guess what? Have a marriage and are building mm -hmm. a lifelong marriage that are building world impacting families and have built and are building multi-million dollar businesses. It's, it, I studied Chris before I, Brennan had to listen to me a ton before we jumped on board. So <laughs> anyway, so let me, let me, um, with our time here, uh, I, d I promised some, some pictures and I think we should go there. And I've also been talking a ton, Chris, uh, what are some thoughts, things going through your mind as I'm sharing some of this? So first of all, your, your family's fantastic, man. Tell us about these awesome people and why you're doing this. So prospecting <laughs> for many people is just to make a buck, but we're all making a buck for a reason, right? And I think the more we connect our hearts to why we're trying to turn that knob up a little higher, it helps us stay focused and stay motivated. So what's behind all this? Uh, it, that purpose and family exactly and so this is this is a recent picture of us um we we recently joined uh the minivan tribe a community and uh let's see <laughs> the <minivan> <laughs> <tribe>. <laughs> yes uh, it's like we, we caved like i can't fit car seats in another we just anyway i do we do love vans though and this is us just having fun being goofy being ourselves and owning the fact that we are uh, now van owners minivan owners so it seems even hard for me to say minivan i'll just say van anyway the point is is he, here's us see my wife my beautiful wife beth with our third baby girl i'm so nervous <laughs> um on to the left and then emmett our oldest who just turned four and then myself and then levi little levi just strutting over there uh with a binky uh two years old and so, um, yes, this is, this is the Baden family, us. And I want it with prospecting. I made a comment that said prospecting is something, it's a principle that's so ingrained. Hmm. Uh, it, I mean, it's great for, for uh, marriage and for family, and, and maybe we'll get into some of that. But in terms of business for this morning's conversation, it's something that I'm even teaching my kids Mm -hmm. And it's something that I, when you guys are listening to the story, I hope that you're inspired and encouraged. Like I didn't just, I don't just, I'm not just saying that because I hope it, I really want to share a principle and a story that really gives you the inspiration to actually feel these things. 
And the premise is if my, th- he's four now, he literally just turned four, but he started this when he was three uh, years old and two months. My son has a keychain business and is making money door to door because he is prospecting. So let's just kind of throw in the back of our mind. If Emmett can do it, so can we. Huh. So he starts off with um, making a keychain. Well, you might be wondering why a keychain, Chris? And here's why. I'm working and Emmett comes up to me and he's like, dad, I want to get a toy. I was like, that's great. He's like, can I get one? I was like, absolutely. You could get a toy. Who doesn't want a toy when you're three? I still want toys. And he's like, great. Well, let's go get one. I was like, oh, well, uh, to get a, to get a toy, Emmett, you need money. Oh, okay. Well, how do I get money? I was like, well, to get money, you have to solve problems for other people. And he's like, okay, well, let's go solve problems for other people. And at that point I was kind of like, ah, dang it. Now I got to figure out how to help a three-year-old solve problems for other people. Like ah, I walked right into that. <laughs> so we thought and thought and thought. And then one day, um, <laughs> I got to think of the, the right way to say this. B, uh, uh, actually we've joked about this. And so I, th- yeah, B's not going to hate me if I share it this way. Um, and hopefully I don't offend any moms out there. There's so much preface. You guys, what is he thinking about? This is kind of how it happened. We love each other. It's all great. She, she's, she lost her keys or, and couldn't find them. Or, and, uh, so we're like, oh man, like maybe we could help mom not lose her keys. We'd have a big keychain uh, cause then it's harder to lose. And so that became the problem that we would solve. And so he started making uh, keychains. So my wife is really, really creative. So that's actual leather. She has a leather kit. So we're like, let's make a leather one. So Emmett's like, he, he the energy behind this is crazy. I'm like, there's no way he's going to fall through on this. He followed through everything. <laughs> so that's him making it. And then this is him painting it. And he's three, he's three years, he's three years old and two months here. So, um, yeah, so he's painting, putting the thing together. So making a keychain so you can help people not lose their keys. And, um, this is, we, we've done this more than once. Right. And so this is another one that he's done. And just a quick little point here. Notice that this isn't necessarily beautiful art, (laughs) right? The products and services that we bring to market when they come to market aren't always beautiful, not aren't always ready. In fact, I've heard a really good phrase recently from another influencer I follow. He said, if you're not a little embarrassed of your product, um, then it's, it's, you've probably waited too long to bring it to market. Mm -hmm. Like implying you should be a little embarrassed, right? Mm -hmm. Um, always be committed to fully solving the problem, but you can figure that out as you go. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And so, um, in, in this case, like, yeah, he got done painting it, but notice like it solves the problem. Like that thing's huge. <laughs> People aren't gonna, yeah. yeah. They're not going to lose their key. No, no. <laughs> so this is miss Linda and we didn't know miss Linda prior to going out and we haven't talked to miss Linda since. Hmm. Um, and so, but this is him, um, selling miss Linda. Now, when I say him selling miss Linda, he has to do the pitch. Well, Chris, mm-hmm. he's three. I don't care if you can't pitch, you can't do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> So he says, my name's Emmett and I help people not lose keys. Think about it. Think about it. Right. It's so simple, right? Like think about in your business. Like a lot of times we're thinking of a headline or think about our Facebook profiles. Think about our subject lines and emails. Think about, think about, think about all the landing pages we have. And all it needs to be is maybe it's just like, I'm Chris, I'm so-and-so and and I do this. Yeah. And I make three paragraphs long, way too complicated. yeah. Yeah. And, and like, we, I mean, we love copy and, and it, it's really, really powerful. It just, the, the emphasis is don't over, don't like overcomplicate and, and, um, respect how powerful simple can be. Now mm-hmm. I want to make a point here, Chris, because in this story, this is not the first attempt. What's up, Janae? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is, not, this is actually the fifth attempt. It turns out people do say no to three-year-olds as well. Mm-hmm. Who turns out a three-year-old? Interesting. It is interesting. And this was what was so fun, Chris. And I want everyone to hear this is being able to experience rejection through the eyes of a three-year-old. Interesting exercise. Mm-hmm. Interesting exercise. Here's what happened. First one, knock, knock, knock. You got people booing the rejectors. <laughs> Boo, yeah, that's right. Let's go get them. Right. Let's go get them. Come on. <laughs> I love it. You guys are with me. Let's go. It's Monday. (laughs) Um, They do suck. But, but here, but here's what was so cool. And I hope everyone can kind of hear process. This is the first one 
is funny. Like there's different types of rejection because he's knocking on the door and you can hear like, sometimes you see the blinds move a little bit or you hear the dog barking and, and then they like go into the other room and you're like, we know you're home. Like, this is so awkward. Like why? <laughs> anyway, so there's that type of rejection. And finally, <clears throat> um, by the fourth door, he's like, oh, like his whole physical demeanor, everything. He's like, he's just totally heartbroken. I was like kind of nervous for him doing this thing. I was like, is this going to work? Like, I can't believe we're even doing this. What am I doing? Um, but, and I'm thinking like how to pitch this and like, how do we actually bring value to people, blah, blah, blah. So we craft this thing with him. And finally the fifth door, Miss Linda opens and then the son comes in and he's like, what do you, what, what do you want? <laughs> and so I'm like, Emmett. And he says, I'm Emmett and I solve, and I help people not lose their keys. And, and so they're like, oh, cool. And they start, then Miss Linda comes and then starts asking questions. And then I say, we're an entrepreneur family. This is all I, the only part that I did say is we're an entrepreneur family and we're teaching about the, the value of solving problems for people. Uh -huh. And so um, we asked if we could take a picture and share the story. She said, yes. And, um, it, what was cool is number one, he got to kind of push through <clears throat> that rejection and persevere and actually see the result to the point where he's like, can we go solve problems? Can we, he, like, he asked wow. me, um, if we can do it and which is crazy. And so this is him. Um, you know, we, we've done this more than once. I know he had like a $10 bill and the other one, a couple dollars here, but, <laughs> um, they get, they jump in the wagon and we go door to door. And we just, we go make friends and we talk to people and, um, the, the, another strong rejection point this day in particular was really powerful because this person actually answered and said, no, thanks. Like mm -hmm. looked him down in the eyes and was like, no. And it was just kind of a, a little bit of a, like he was a nice guy, but it was just kind of a dynamic. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, and as soon as he said that before Emmett had a chance to respond, I said, oh, Emmett. Do you know what he just said? And then he looks at me and he's like, what did he just say? He said, he doesn't have a problem with losing his keys. So we can just go find someone else that has it. Brilliant. Okay. And he jumps in the cart and then we start walking away and he looks back and he says, bye, Mr. Jim, have a nice day. And that was it. And I just think about like all of us, like we're so scared or we're scarred or mm -hmm. from other relationships, from other businesses, from mm -hmm. other fail, whatever it is. And like, I was like, that's so cool for, for all it can be. All it can be is just, oh, they don't have that problem. Let's mm -hmm. go to the next person. Why? Because we have the, we, we know we have the conviction. We know what problem we're solving and we know there's somebody out there that has it. Mm -hmm. And so we we're just on a mission to go find those people. And it's our job to talk to enough people. It's not someone else's problem that I need to sale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we give that power away and we give that problem away, mm -hmm. we lose the conviction that we need to actually go sell. Mm -hmm. So we just went to the next one. And guess what? Literally right after that moment, this is so fun. Right. If we put, as we push through that and we, and we lead with that conviction, the act, and you, I, you can see it actually look closely in the picture behind mm -hmm. that, that white truck above Emmett's head. Yeah. That's a, that's a pest control company truck. That truck pulled up right like right at that house right after as we were walking away i was like mm -hmm. oh in my head honestly i was like well that's he's, he might be a business owner he'll get it <laughs> <laughs> and we went up to him and that's who we sold perfect so the the punchline there's so many stories that are fun in so here many, and, yeah. and we're, i'm wrapping up here on the story um is <clears throat> like always be looking always be thinking like who has this problem and just ask. Mm -hmm. And so right after the rejection, the biggest rejection came the biggest breakthrough mm. and pe people feeling that big rejection this morning, it's Monday, baby, come on, like, let's bring it because your breakthrough is right ahead of you. And I'm not just saying that because it's, Oh, think good, feel good stuff. I mean, it is, but at the same, like it does do those things, but it also is true. Why? Because prospecting works. Yes. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So dang, you got a cool family. First of all, great job being a dad for real. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And just to kind of like, uh, uh, like land this plane here, <clears throat> he did bring the money home. We do have the save jar, the give jar. 
and the checking account jar Our essentially save, give and checking shot glasses but i see their jars okay. <laughs> yeah, right 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 yeah <laughs> exactly exa- you know use what you have right no but the, yeah the, these these are jars in there and so we put that all in there and then of course he got his toy power ranger that he really wanted so that's kind of the uh the prospecting story and in, in the last picture that i had here um and so he solved problems and he was able to go actually buy his own toy at three years old yeah prospecting yeah. works <laughs> all right we- kelton, kelton says this is so encouraging june uh you got to get over that hump after the night comes the morning yeah for real dude um brennan says um great lesson yeah thanks brennan Ian says, whoa, those are some of my favorite dudes right there. <laughs> Ian, I'm yeah. just going to pop up that um, that little phrase right there and just keep it there the whole time. That'd be great. There we go. That's yeah. our new, uh, that's our new uh, banner. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And that was the last picture I had for you guys. But I wanted to share, like, I didn't want to just tell the story. Um, I wanted you to, like, meet Emmett. I wanted you to see the process. I wanted you to see the power of prospecting, working for a three-year-old, and just remember, see it through the eyes of a three-year-old like I got to, and remember that it literally is that simple, and it literally is that powerful, and it can work, like, as soon as you jump off this live and you start prospecting. (laughs) Yeah, that's really good. And and, uh, Kelton saying, this is so encouraging. Like, for real, me, me too. I... I mean, I know what to do. I'm a professional, but just hearing someone else like you, Chris, say this over and over and over and show us how a kid sees this is, is so encouraging for me. Uh, Rock, let's see. Rock says prospecting is something I struggle with the most, just knowing how to do it without being salesy and yet get the sale. Ha, ha. Okay. So fantastic. Rock. Thanks. Let's pivot a little bit to how do we do it? Yes, the how. I love it. And I totally agree, Rock. I hate that creepy, selly, you know, cold caller who just won't freaking get off the phone kind of feel. Um, so yeah, Chris, give us the give us the help here. Yeah, I, I appreciate you saying that. And because that that hits that hits on on a huge, huge, huge difference. And the difference is most people are spending their effort convincing people mm-hmm. rather than just being concerned for people. Hmm. If you're solving a problem, th- and there's different var- variances of problems, but if you're genuinely concerned for somebody and you know that you can serve the problem and you know how to solve the problem with excellence, mm-hmm. you get to be concerned. But if you're convincing, you're too busy thinking about, worried about yourself rather than somebody else. And so usually when we're scared, it's because we're thinking about ourselves instead of the other person. Convincing is the death of a sales professional. Hmm. It's the death of a sales professional. Why? Nobody likes convincing. They don't like to convince. They don't like to be convinced. All of it, that whole human interaction is one of the worst things on planet earth. Yeah. And and if it hurts too much, guess what we're not going to do? Prospect. We're not going to keep doing it. We're not going to keep approaching. Even if we do push through and actually talk to somebody, we're gonna be so insecure and what we bring into the conversation is nothing anyone wants to be around. So if we can just take all that off of us and put it over here and then put on our concerned hat over here, then we can approach people with conviction, with confidence, with wholeheartedness, with with two open ears. And so how do we do it, Chris? Questions. Yeah. Ask questions. That's it. And that, and that oh, kind of yeah. leads us into yeah. the eight, eight questions. Yeah. Ask questions. So that was my question too. How do you do it, Chris? Dude, we got so many. Can I just catch up on comments for just a second? Yeah, do it. Do it. Yeah. You're, you're crushing. I want to make sure they're like right there with you. Um, it's just new. That, this is Kelton. It's interesting that we as agency owners, um, yeah, forget about offering value and solving problems. So, so true. So true. And then Sean says, Rock, you're not alone. It's a common thing. Just remember to focus on talking about your number one problem to solve for real. Yep. And then uh, Kelton. Oh, that's me saying. Chris the best. <laughs> for real. I'm just over here <laughs> hanging out with people on the phone while you're talking, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you need Rock Davis. It's the uh, it's the hardest thing to go and make that call for sure. Rock says, uh, Brennan, save that for the attorneys. Save everything for the attorneys, Brennan. For right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, Sean says, never try to convince, be concerned, um, that they have a problem and guide them through their own head trash and help them make their own decisions. Love that. Ian, 
there's no buyers. There's no buyers high when someone is convinced. That's a really great point. Ian, yes. faithful Facebook user, chiming in <laughs> from West Coast VA. <laughs> All right. Anyway, you guys are crushing it. So yeah. So Chris, how how do we do this without being silly? How, what, like, what's the process? What do we do today? Got sales calls today. What do we do next? Yeah. What I would recommend doing um, is is use these eight questions. These are the best eight questions that we found. We can give these to you today. How do we um, get them? As a get, um, best way would be just to reach out, reach out to myself on Facebook, okay. Chris Baden. Right on Facebook, just message me. Um, and, and please, it, cause there's a lot of messages coming on because guess what I'm, I'm doing today and every day prospecting. <laughs> so there's a lot of messages in there, but if you put this magical code in messaging me, uh, then you we, I can send you this PDF type okay. in, uh, type in, um, what should be the magical code? I was going to say prospecting. <laughs> I think should we put that in? let's just do prospecting. Yeah. The word prospecting send prospecting and when i see like just prospecting when you message me um i will send you back the pdf that has the eight questions in fact um if you want chris i could share a screen we could go through maybe just a, like the first two but yeah. then they can they can just message me later to see the rest of them um Absolutely. if you want to do that yep, uh, that's really great yeah and and um so i put chris's um handle and link to his facebook up there at the top in the description of, or the, the title description of this um, video. And I'll drop it right here in the comments as well and just use the word prospecting. That's great to help Chris and his team sort out all the comments because I get it, Chris. Facebook yes, and, and Mel, I know you're you're watching this. That is the cue. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, she always, she does a great job helping me with uh, managing um, my, my chats. And so, um, perfect. Okay, cool. So let's see. I think I actually have to, By the way, uh, Clover says, thanks for, thanks for sharing all this stuff. Uh, yeah, you bet. Yeah. Like we, I mean, walk the goal us the process, she says, walk yeah. us through the process. Okay, perfect. Right. Yeah. So, right, Clover, the, he. <laughs> Or yeah. he, yeah, faithful Facebook user. <laughs> okay, can I add this? There we go. Is that there good? we go. Yeah, yeah, it's right there. Okay, so just some practical practical things is um, what helps me go into um, getting market research or having someone, you mentioned agency owners were, were watching, listening earlier. Here's the thing, like take a portion. Actually, this is a great parallel. Look at what I'm doing right now. Hey, let me give you the first two questions, but if you want the rest of it, like just message me and then I'll give that to you for free. Oh, yeah. Like that's, that is a, and I didn't even think about that, Chris, but I was like, like I've gone through so many lead magnets and building connections, relationships. Like it's just kind of a habit pattern, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But do that in your own businesses. So what is the thing that, how can you give somebody a little sample for free to build no like, and trust to build relationship? Oh, and by the way, actually serve people, actually be concerned. Because mm -hmm. I've had, I know, I know that I've had my back up against the wall. Like it's, I have to, I'm the sole provider for my family. Like I could, I had a way to get married because I felt like half a man because I couldn't provide, I couldn't even provide for mm -hmm. myself and another person when I was working to get married. I was mm -hmm. like, and thankfully B stayed with me for almost six years before we got married. I'm like, Hey, do you want to like live with my parents? And don't, she's, <laughs> she thought about it cause she loves me, but she is like, no, <laughs> I don't blame it. Right. But, but uh, we wanted to build our own life and do our own thing. And I, like, that was, oh, there's so many different humbling times in my life. And I know everyone listening, like, I know I'm not alone in that. Mm -hmm. I know everyone else, everyone else suffers from this, but we can, we can persevere. We can push through and prospecting is the one thing where we learn and understand and listen, the market, the people we serve. And we start feeling wholehearted and good. And, and we actually love prospecting and talking to more people because we get to make new friends mm -hmm. and then they refer us and it grows exponentially. And then check this out. The business actually starts giving back more than we feel we put in huh. rather than it take away. It steals from us and steals our time and steals, you know, uh, like uh, you know, we watch our kids or we don't watch our kids grow up rather because this business stole from me. Or the marriage is suffering and pissed off at the business because it's a priority over the marriage. Whatever mm. the dynamic is, this this is the one thing that has really helped me kind of push through. So let's look at the first question. When we're in this research mode and just going out to somebody, have something like I have today that's free, valuable, that's actually served you and serves your customer. 
And um, th when, then when they start talking about, ask them about their biggest challenge, their biggest problem. It's all you need to do. What's the one thing that's holding you back the most right now? Can you zoom in a little bit on that for us, Chris? Absolutely. Thanks for mentioning that. I zoomed out so you could see the whole thing. The pain, yeah. We call it the pain funnel Yeah. And with the eight questions. And hey, so, um, Rox says, can you give us an example of a cold caller email interaction? Like as you're going through, can you kind of make some real life examples out of this? Yeah. Okay. So, um, let's take like, if we're an agency and we provide Facebook ads for somebody, for example, okay. Um, lead gen is the problem you solve. Mm -hmm. Lead gen is the problem you solve. Guess what? Every business wants more leads. <laughs> <laughs> well, things are going great. Yeah. great something's working we should throw some gasoline on it so we can increase sales mm -hmm. <laughs> man i'm really struggling getting somebody in the door how do i do it and so um you know uh, rock your question of what's an example of a cold email is ask questions around lead gen so you could ask you know how many customers are did you bring in last month how many do you want to bring in and notice that there's going to be a gap there. And so that's where these questions would kick in. And you would say, well, tell me more about that. Yeah. So to, to over, so just for other others listening that aren't maybe an agency and you have a different product or service you're offering, lead with this. What's the number one thing holding you back from more sales? What's the number one thing holding you back from going forward in your business? Like just ask people that that's your first research question. Mm -hmm. And then when they respond, just ask, like, can you tell me more about that? Because it's, it's a natural thing. Let's, let's pretend like we're walking into a mall right now and we walk in and what happens? Somebody walks up and what do they say? Hey, can I help you find anything today? Yeah. Right. And then what do we say? No, I'm just looking. <laughs> <laughs> we we have we we have built-in processes to not go deep to not share the real thing. Uh -huh. These questions, the funnel is literally it there to go down to this thing we call personal impact, which is kind of another teaching we go into. But for today, um, it starts with just this: like, tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. So you know what, like, what would that look like in the retail store? It'd be like, oh, what brought you in today? Oh, I was thinking about a shirt. Oh, well, how come how come you're thinking about a shirt? would be like, tell me more about that. Tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. What kind of shirt are you looking for? Yep. Uh, well, I want to go to this event and, um, you know, I need to look nice. And so I need kind of like a nice button shirt or something. Okay. Um, and then going into the next one, like, can you, you know, can you be more specific? Like, um, does it need to be like, you know, a solid color? Does it need to be really like fancy and you need to catch kind of attention? Is it like a specific type of party, a theme party, right? It's like, be more specific. And so literally if you e even, I mean, all these are great, like totally just message me, you know, we can go through the rest of these questions, but <clears throat> um, even just these two alone will really, really serve everyone at a high level because you're talking about, you're leading with the problem. And then you're just asking them to tell you a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. And guess what everyone wants to do? Get rid of their problems. Mm -hmm. They'll dump on you. And if you give them, if they give you a specific example, guess what that's going to lead into? Like, man, I'm really struggling with getting, if you're an agency, like getting more customers, like, well, can you be more, can you tell me more about that? Like, yeah, I'm paying this much per lead. And you're like, oh my gosh, you're paying $10 a lead. Like I get my people $4 a lead. Yeah. Now, now be, before, before they, before you even know each other, you know exactly what's going to sell them on doing a phone call with you. What if I told you I could get you half the, the your lead cost? Because they just and, told you the first pain point that came to mind, which was lead cost. Exactly. Now I know where to go. Yeah. And notice that like people always say like, you know, selling, selling isn't telling. And it's like, but I mean, it's true. It's just over said, overplayed. And it's not really, it doesn't dive into like, actually like, okay, well, how do I do it then? Like, this is how <laughs> we mm -hmm. just ask questions and listen, ask targeted. And these, these are studied questions over a period of time. These are the ones that we found work the best in this order. Mm -hmm. And so we use them and encourage other people to use them because they work. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So yeah, um, I actually want to copy that. So I'm going to shoot you a message here in a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yes. And by the way, Sean, just a, a few, a uh, few uh, clicks up here in the, um, in the conversation, Sean dropped links to Chris's Facebook account. Uh, Sean and Chris are, and Melissa are all business partners. So if you see Sean's post up there, 
Uh, there's the links to Chris's Facebook account and just use the word prospecting so they can sort through all the comments they get and they'll send you this thing. There was something else you had from a, a book also that was <laughs> super easy to access. Yes, we've devoured marketing books, sales, but like all, there's so many of them. And so I just, I wanted to be able to provide that for you guys as well. Uh, Jay Abraham is mm -hmm. just w one of the greats, one of the all time greats. And so there, we have a PDF version of, and you can get this other places, but just want to make it convenient for you. And I'll make a point, any, anyone that messages me prospecting, I'll send this to you as well, is getting everything you can out of all you've got. And th there's, there's a ton Show of stuff. I want to see it real quick. It's a really cool cover. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Here, let me pull that up and share screen over here. My command center of screen. <laughs> <laughs> Kel uh, Kelton says totally um, only if it solves their problem, though, and cold call. They're just chatting about cold calling a little bit. Like people don't like cold calls. Yeah, they don't. But but getting someone's attention in the right way um, is so, so important. So I'm totally with you on all these conversations. Uh, Grant says, Junaid, um, yeah, great guy. I mean, Adam's a great guy. Yeah, Janae just popped up a sweet quote up. Right here. I appreciate that comment, Chris. Just a yeah. quick thought on that. The one yeah. like, oh, you know, prospecting, no one likes cold calling. Think about how most of cold calling is done. And, and there's literally one specific case that we've worked in some of our client work that we, we've worked on. Um, you know, most people are like, oh, you know, I was in merchant services uh, way back when. That was my first sales job, mm -hmm. uh, credit card processing. And ev the pitch was basically like, let me see your statement. I can save you money. Let me see your statement. And everyone's heard this over and over and like, nobody cares, which made it the easy, like be thankful that most people are awful at prospecting because it makes it so easy to be different and stand out. That's really you true. give any glimpse of light, any glimpse of value, and you're like a freaking king or queen. Mm -hmm. And so in, in, um, you know, a agency that, uh, was one of our clients, SEO agency, um, they actually have a couple assets where they can provide even some leads. So if we're work, uh, reaching out into a particular niche, um, say for example, well, um, Rock, right here, Rock's a he's a print he owns a print store, online print store. His his market is churches, um, so they're just reaching out. They're doing cold call, cold emails just to get people in the know of what they do. Very Perfect. Good. Okay, so I'm going to shoot from the hip right here on this one. If you're reaching out to churches, what are the you know a lot of them are struggling right now just to meet. COVID. So, you know, maybe you do like a Sam, you know, and some of them are doing like, um, you know, zoom meetings or their different strategies. How can print fall into the narrative of what, what they're doing and how can you give just a little sample to, to bring the congregation together and encourage and inspire connection. Now you're in alignment with their mission, right. Of, mm -hmm. of, you know, managing the congregation, managing connection, relationship, with, with everyone's faith and belief. And so um, having a little mailer camp, and maybe you've thought about some of these ideas, but imagine going to a church like, hey, I know you're struggling. You already know their problem and pain. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm reaching out to churches that are struggling with this. Is that you? Oh my gosh, yes. I have an idea that's actually, now Now think of an idea that actually works, right? But if there's a campaign, like maybe a, a direct mailer campaign that's like, hey, we're all jumping on Zoom or meeting, doing, you know, church house or like whatever the thing is, like how does print fall into that narrative? Like game over. Now you're like, they don't even know who you are yet or what your business is, but they know that they like you. And it's only going to be natural that they're going to use you or refer you. Mm, this perfect, perfect example. Yes. Any more questions like that? If you got specifics for anybody watching, that's absolutely perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rock, for asking that. Like literally to this morning, like we, I want you to feel inspired and encouraged and have way more confidence about prospecting because it will, it does change your life. It does work. Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay, cool. And uh, Kelton says, Tully man, content is a great place uh, yourself as a, play, a great to place yourself as an expert. And that means free as well. Yeah, absolutely. Chris is on yeah. fire, baby. Okay, <laughs> hey, Brennan, good to see you, man. Okay. So, um, hey, here's that. Can I drop this uh, cover for this PDF you have as well? Yeah. Yeah. I share the screen. screen. There we go. Yep. Um, yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Right here, America's number one marketing wizard, says Harvey. Um, so yeah, this is Jay Abraham. 21 ways you can get, you can outthink, outperform, out earn your competition. I want to uh, provide this resource particularly because here's 21 ways. Like this will help either give you one tactical way to go implement it or create the creative juices to be like, oh, I see this idea, but if I did it this way, it'd work perfect for my industry. Great. Like 
-hmm. then, you know, go approach it that way. So this is, um, you know, a, a great particular book that focuses on just different ways to approach a market and stand out uh, in your market. That's super kind. So same thing. Uh, go up to Sean's comment. If you can find Sean's comment up there, you'll see a link to Chris Baden's Facebook. Drop him a message with the word prospecting. Again, make sure you put the word prospecting there because it's tons of messages. And then they'll just reply back with um, with the links for these two PDFs. These are super helpful. Um, so um, let's see. Yusuf says, how do you add value on a call without telling them your project details? Oh, good question. I like it. And uh, and sorry, you, you, it seems like you can see the name. What was the name? Yusuf. Yusuf. Okay, Yusuf. Yeah, I appreciate that question. How do you add value on the call without telling them about your project? <clears throat> the, like, like giving the farm away, I guess, right? Yeah, to, to you're, you're selling the what, and then they're buying the how. You're selling mm -hmm. the what, and they're buying the how. And so what what's the value? I mean, there's twofold. Number one, the value is just listening to them and identifying the pain and getting to the place where they're like, this is what I, hits me in the face every single day, and this is so annoying. And I know that might not, see, like, well, Chris, is that value? It's like, they're, they're feeling and being heard. There is value to that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that helps. <sighs> Coming up with solutions is easy. Clearly defining our and their problem is way more work and way more valuable. Mm -hmm. Coming up with solutions is easy, but, but clearly defining the problem for somebody is much more difficult. It takes thought, creativity, and you're like, oh, this. Because when, once you really tee up a problem, you ever... Like, I mean, I'm trying to think of a good example, like the end result of something, you hear it and you're like, oh my God, that's so simple. That's genius. That was exactly what I was struggling with, right? Mm -hmm. If it's the post-it or whatever that sliced bread, whatever that thing is, um, it, it took a long time to actually cultivate that pain and challenge and think of a way to actually make it simple. But like that wrestling is the much longer and more challenging place. So when you're on the phone, I just don't want to skip over that. When like ask questions and listen, ask these eight questions and listen, and you'll be like, you you already know what problem you solve, so you you'll be able to bring that. I hope that helps. If you want more specifics, like ask specifically what your market is or share that. Yeah, and um, just so you know, Yusuf, um, maybe before you jumped on, I think you're already on here watching though. Um, I just highlighted right here on the screen Chris's Facebook profile. Drop him a message because the eight questions he's referencing. He's got a PDF that I've seen before. He'll just drop it out to you. You can like print this thing off and stick it next to your monitor. And as you're on the phone, you just literally walk through them in sequence and you will find out so much information, exactly what your prospects want to buy. It's a super easy tool. Um, Kelton says, what niche are you in, uh, Yusuf? Uh, so Yusuf, if you want to let us know that, we can give a little more feedback there. And uh, Ian says, I found the more I give value, the more money I receive. I rarely find situations where I over deliver a call and they bail. Usually it's been asking how they can give me more money. And same with me, Yusuf, just to kind of throw in my two cents there. Um, I have I have not once so far, I, and, and in 20 plus years of selling, I've not once found anyone who I've given so much value to on a call, a Zoom call, it used to be voice calls. Remember back in like the... <laughs> In the two thousand, the early two thousands, we used our phones. Um, <laughs> I've never given so much information that they um, that they walk away. Okay, so Yusuf's in. Here we go. He's in life insurance, mortgage brokers. Dude, I used to sell financial services. I'm Series Seven, Series Sixty Three, CFP, um, and I owned an investment advisory firm. And same thing there. Um, you need to read the book called The Excellent Investment Advisor. The Excellent Investment Advisor. Prospecting genius. And it will walk you through how to really add insane value in the mindset space of that conversation. Um, and and in a way that they're going to see you as their expert and they want to lean in and, and need you. So anyway, yeah. I, I'm glad you shared that because if you send it to me, I'd be like, Chris, like that's totally your zone. <laughs> you, I, I did play, I was a state farm agent once upon a time and had a series six and 63, but you have the see it. You have all the other, uh, letter combinations that <laughs> okay. so beyond being a cfp and then we'll get back to questions um beyond being a cfp hey cn good to see you um and tracy says she's in the uh she's working with e-commerce <laughs> um so let's talk about e-commerce prospecting here in a second chris chris is a four-time 
Am I getting this right? A four freaking time American Ninja Warrior contestant. <laughs> that's so killer cool, man. I just think that's so awesome. But I've I've been known to monkey around a little bit, ninja around. <laughs> we we do have a, a ninja cube in our backyard, and I I totally have my boys doing monkey bars and rings and all this stuff. So <laughs> I was watching um that greatest race thing, that Bear Grills thing. Like he's the new yes. Amazon just dropped a new one. I was watching this weekend with my kids, and I thought about you. I was like, oh my gosh, Chris, we crushed this. <laughs> Bear like pulls up, and he like pulls up on his helicopter, like always his back flips off the skid of the helicopter into the water. I'm like. Yeah, that's Chris. Let's just be real. How cool is Bear? He's like amazing, that right? dude. I mean, his first name is Bear. He was born like, that way, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He right. he actually rappelled down from the umbilical cord and then made his way through. I don't oh, know. Is that too much? Know. Sorry, uh, sorry. Too much. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, CN's working with e-commerce, um, and then I think um, Kelton kind of throwing back at that. I'm thinking Kelton, you're responding back to uh, the e-commerce thing. I would start with posting and joining Facebook groups and offering value. Um, then all you have to do is put it in the position of one that solves your problems. Yeah, great. great. So anyway, yeah. e-commerce, talk about that. Yeah, I mean, and by all means, like share share the product uh, in, in e-com, the e-com space that you're, because that helps with creativity. Um, I know I recognize Chris. Yeah, um, you know, like, yes, that's the guy from American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> uh, so, um, you yeah. Dress, like in your American Ninja Warrior, like suit when you're on camera. You mean like this? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can't. That would be awesome. Though, if I could just be like, I should just like rip my shirt off or something. Anyway. So, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, I do. I need, if, if anyone's listening to this and wants to dream 100 me, if you know what that means, please send me smoke bombs. Because on Zoom, I want to drop like a smoke bomb and then the smoke and then I just ninja disappear. Like that's how I want to leave every live I do. <laughs> you <need a> <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm going to do this at some point. So if anyone wants to help me like accelerate that process, please find that and send that to me. And the um, smoke alarm goes off and the sprinkler starts. <laughs> like, hey. Yeah, the most epic failure of. So um, <laughs> e-commerce. Ecom, ecom, ecom. Think, think. Okay, for this one. Okay, so we we had an ecom funnel um, running, and we did really, really well with it. Uh, we sold a high ticket like water ionizer. It's like two to ten thousand bucks. Um, here's so what we did. So how do you go from cold to to a high ticket ecom sale? And insert creativity and a lot of prospecting, right? Um, one okay, thing that on. I just I just saw that Beth, your wife, is an American Ninja Warrior too. She did a season. Yeah. What the. <laughs> Yep. No wonder yep. your three-year-old's a rock star prospect. Okay. <laughs> Get back to the e Yes. Uh, so back to e commerce Yeah. So um, <clears throat> what? So what we did was, and and this this is this kind of goes back to like a, a core belief. So it's genuine to us too. Any business that we do, we're aligned and connected with some type of of giving. Hmm. And so what what are we selling? Like we want the message and the story and serving people. Like what it, business is nothing more than a systematic way of delivering a product or service. That's business. And, and a good transaction is when two parties come together and are in a better place because of it. Hmm. When they part, that's a good transaction. So you can't do any of that without people. <laughs> you can't systematically deliver anything without people. If you don't have people, you don't like you're making something for nobody <laughs> and nothing. It's always comes down to people. And so how are we serving those people? But then how you go about all that matters. And so that's why we actually partnered with Neverthirst. We're, what are we selling? At the time we were selling um, like the best water you can drink on planet earth, right? Through these ionizers. So w this message of getting water to the world is insanely congruent. So we partnered with Neverthirst who provides clean drinking water for third world countries. Mm. And so in, in that, that stint, in fact, I think our, our third one um, it should finally be being installed in Chad. So is Cambodia, Uganda, and then Chad. Those are the three different places that will impact roughly just over a thousand different people. And by impact, it means it'll save roughly that many lives because there's hundreds of people that are dying from not having access to clean drinking water per day. Wow. And uh, there, it was about a billion dollar, uh, billion people problem. In the last 12 years, we've got it down about 600 something million. And so we're making our small contribution to getting that down to zero having anyway, it goes down into our own personal impact, why we're connected to it. It's like, if I had to look my boys in the eyes and know, wonder if they're going to make it that day or not, because they didn't have clean drinking water. I'm like, Oh, okay. I get it. Like, 
as a provider, I'm like, that just crushed me. And so Sean and Mel, like they have their own awesome story of why it fit. We looked at each other. We're like, the, our meeting on that was basically like, yeah, we're doing this. <laughs> it was so fast, so easy. And so e-com, why does this matter? And how, and, and how do you- clarify your question here, Tracy, too. She said, I help e-commerce business scale, but having trouble finding established ones versus startups with no money. Okay, let me think about that for two seconds. I help e-commerce business scale by having trouble. Oh, so you're serving e com Serving uh, You're not running your, your own e Yeah. Okay, so I am going down. So many startups. Dang it. Deep no, details. Dude, are you kidding? Just having having the social aspect and the heart in that is so important. I, I anybody in any industry that we're going into, they're all digital agency owners in here, but but you got to have the heart behind it. Yeah, it yeah, it always comes down to the people. So even if you're you know serving ecom companies, like what what is something that aligns with you know with serving them? I went down like I am an ecom company, and here's how we had something aligned with our product. To what create conversation. So that's the overarching theme is be concerned, create conversation, do research. I did not say sell at any point. In fact, like I didn't have any sales background or sales formal training. And so, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to think of some like quick joke about who's calling right now, but <laughs> call in on our hot Chris and Chris hotline for <laughs> your, your e-com tip of the day. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, like I, I, I'm a Midwest boy that's like, I, I guess, borderline Canadian nice. And I, I have like this athletic background. And so like that nice competition blend has worked well in the sales arena, but I still don't always follow the perfect formula or tactics. In fact, what I learned was how to listen and connect with people. And then I get into sales and I read all these marketing and sales books and they're basically, I'm like, they're just telling me to do all those things, but it feels dirty when they say it because it's some tactic to get what they want. Like sometimes I feel a little dirty when I read these books. I still read them because I'm like, oh, now I understand why that works so well. Mm -hmm. But I didn't learn it that way. I learned I learned it through just networking and being involved in community. Hmm. That makes sense. I, I got to ask a quick question from a time standpoint. I'm. Do you have something at the turn of the hour? Um, I I do, and it's okay. it's our own team huddle, and Sean and Mel are on this too, so we could probably stretch it be about five minutes late, but outside okay. of that, we definitely have some things to talk right. about. <laughs> then, then uh, Chris, Chris Baden team, y'all, y'all can just have your team huddle right here. Cause we'd like <laughs> yeah. to listen in and actually you know what in the world you talk about in your team meetings. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Ian says, Tracy would love to hear, um, what you offer. Yeah. So Tracy, just a quick, a quick tip there. Um, definitely reach out to Chris Again, his link is right there. Grab the stuff he's offering and, and dig deeper in that conversation because we're going to run short on time. And Tracy, definitely reach out to Ian. Um, Ian is another phenomenal marketer. And talk about an e-commerce rock star. Ian has crushed it. And obviously, Chris has too because he's got that freaking plaque hanging behind him. Um, so, yeah, you got it. Run it, get it, go, 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 Sean. <laughs> um, okay, so anyway, uh, one more person here, uh, Kelton, just for a content idea. A uh, few guys that I just learned, read a lot. Yeah, then you can uh, purpose your knowledge, repurpose your knowledge, I'm guessing, as free content and use your own stories and experiences, just an idea. Yeah. Just and, and just flown with that, like one really, you know, uh, easy, fast, free, idea to implement as like a give you find the person you're talking to and the problem they have you can create zero content even if you collected like say the top five youtube videos top three youtube videos that talk about that problem or top three blogs that solve that problem or all of that and you compile it you're like um but it's concise and it's uh, like direct on their thing hey i saw that you know i know you're probably struggling with this here are the best resources that I found. What did you provide for that person? Convenience, mm -hmm. right? You, you g gave them multiple different, just like today, it's like, hey, you know, um, we're talking about prospecting. Well, here's exact questions that you can go implement when you're asking people about their problems and go deeper to actually get into their story and hear, and you'll be able to listen to them say something and then you can match, you know, what you know which direction to go because you know what problem you solve exactly. And then there's a resource. Like here's 21 yeah. other ways that Jay, I didn't write the book. Jay did. Right. So it's yep. the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to hit two more questions really quick guys. Uh, Cause then we got to get Chris out of here. Sure thing. Thanks guys. This is from uh, Chris. This is from Tracy as well. Sure thing. Thanks guys. Funny enough and rock. I'm coming to your question. Hang tight. 
Funny enough, I have a team huddle right now too. Okay, I do Facebook ads and messenger bots with personality. Uh, yeah, um, that's great. I've actually hung out with Tracy a little bit. She's a rock star. Good job, Tracy. Rock says, we have so many $100 to $500 products. Do we prospect the whole store or a particular product doing a digital funnel? So remember, Rock has the print shop and his, his market is churches. Yeah. So many um, products and services. Does he go after one? Does he focus just drilling one into the market? Or does he just say, here's our here's our e-store? You know? I love I love that question. Okay. So here's why I love that question is like everyone says ideal customer. I would say, think of it this way. Who can you serve at the highest level? The person that you can serve at the highest level is usually the person that you give all of your services. Like dream up all the cool things you could do for somebody mm -hmm. that creates the most transformational experience that is possible. That is obviously going to cost more because it, it takes more of your time or your creativity, et cetera, but it serves them at a higher level. Like just for, for fun to see where I'm going with this is if you double or tripled your prices and you, and you committed all of that extra revenue into putting extra services, hooks, things involved in the offer that would make this incredible, insane experience, what would you do? And why I'm going this direction and sharing this is simply this. Usually I would want to start with my highest service. Combine, all, which one do I do? This one, this one, this one. Combine the best experience you can, the most expensive, the best transaction for you in the business, but also for who you serve and find a way to start that conversation. Mm. You're going you're gonna to be... Listen, here's the thing about prospecting, okay? It it is time consuming unless you listen to Chris and build great systems and processes to <laughs> replace yourself and buy back your time. Um and and when you're doing that piece, whether you're going to go through the same process whether you're selling a $100 thing or a $100,000 thing. Mm -hmm. Sell the $100,000 thing. <laughs> So that, that's what I would say is you like, don't think about like, go to the highest one. And that's also usually the one that serves your customer at the highest level. Yeah. And rock your products and services are a fulfillment tool, but they're not your expertise. So the highest dollar thing you can sell is the strategy to these churches to reach their people, whatever market anybody's listening is serving. It's not the tool it's not the flyer it's not the facebook ad it's not the website it's not the audio video tricks you play it's the strategy that's where the real money's at when selling your products and services to your market oh that's so that's so I'm, that's so good chris are, do you do you run businesses and sell stuff because that <laughs> me no, no I, i'm making this crap up as i go <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so, that, oh, that's so that's so good because like the more you help them solve their problems or do the thing, the more value they get. The more you can charge too. <laughs> yeah. It, now it ah, so it just keeps going. Anyway, I'm getting all excited over here. Chris Baden, owner of Three Minions, <laughs> sounds like a rock star husband and dad for real. Um, a member of the minivan club which I exited several years ago. We moved to Suburbans. We couldn't, we, we did the mini event for a year. We were so embarrassed. We, we went to Suburbans. <laughs> That's yes. so vain, I know. Sorry, we're on our third Suburban now because we, I mean, five kids, we destroy them. Uh, Chris is uh, coolest thing, I think, not, not the uh, American Ninja Warrior stints four times in a row, but really the fact that you're willing to just throw down so much value and, and people watching, you're, you're catching that here. Obviously, reach out to Chris. His um, his link is just above this, and um, you can look for a comment from Sean. There's Chris's links in there as well. Jump on his Facebook profile, send a private message. He'll send you the free stuff we talked about here. Make sure you use the word prospecting so they can filter all his messages. But but truly catch this. If you don't miss, if you don't catch anything else, catch the fact that Chris is giving. All right, he's giving so much insane value that it helps and it's attractive and it connects you. So the stuff, the, the value he's giving and even the free stuff in the message, that stuff is gonna help you because you can print it off and put it next to you and you'll, you'll make more sales, you'll prospect better. It just works, Chris has got great tools. But do the same thing, follow the steps he's showing you, do the same thing with your markets and it'll work for you. It's just giving. It's, it's more blessed to give than to receive, I think some wise people said. And it's so, so important to be a giver, not a taker and your market will respond to that. You can never, go broke by giving. It's the weirdest thing. It's just true.
Okay. Anything so else, good. Chris? Or are we out of here? We're, we're out of here, man. That was awesome. You landed this plane very nicely. <laughs> Chris Hayden, thanks for being here, man. You've added so much value today. I can't wait. Can't wait to introduce more people to you. All right. Hey, by the way, as everybody knows, I don't make a freaking penny on any of this. I'm not sending Chris leads. There's no commission. There's no affiliate. There's no nothing. There's no ulterior motive. Chris is a fantastic guy. I've gotten to know him over the past few months. And what he's doing is the real thing. And um, and it's it's just honest, good information. That's why we're in this community together. We all we all rise together. And Chris, thanks for adding value. And there is, sorry, one last thing came to mind. Everything you said, because like you are giving in this, pro, like you just talked about giving and you're, you're giving to us and, and been a huge blessing to us. And, and just like being the real, real deal. Thank you for those nice words. Some of those results literally has everyone listening has literally just been doing what Chris said. Uh, mm -hmm. Sean, Mel, myself, we've been focused on and, and challenging ourselves to just only do what Chris is saying. Um, we've closed almost 30 K in business in the last two weeks by creating a new program by following your processes. And so ju just like a huge prospecting, following, no ads, no anything, just simply following what you're saying. So everyone that's like watching this and, and like do what Chris says, do what he says. Like he's really, really good. He's really smart. <laughs> so even though he's just making up on, on the fly, <laughs> anyway, huge, huge thank you to you, man. Uh, very, very grateful to, to come across, you know, paths with you. I know Sean and Mel feel exactly the same and we we've got a hot pipeline. We're about to turn over some more this week. So I'm um, just really grateful for you and all, all you've shared. Dude, I love it. It's so fun to watch people win. It's so fun to be involved with winners. Okay, guys, crush this freaking week. It's Monday. You got it. Go prospect. Yeah, yeah, get on yeah, track. Yeah. Make some money, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Yeah.